come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a podcast comes your way every Saturday night in our quest for total world domination. We hope you'll help, help us out with that by going over to wherever you found us and hit that like or subscribe button, because all of that stuff helps us get found by other like-minded folks like you. These are the Internet Radio Superstars. Michaela. Sean. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Holly, yet the world. Yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah. Destiny. Destiny yeah. chose this I mean, movie. Somebody Once, had to talk about it. Holly. Yeah. What we uh, what we watch tonight? Once in a while, a movie comes along and makes a statement that we can't not oh. address. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that movie was malignant. <laughs> I think this podcast and its entire premise would collapse in on itself if we ignored this movie. I think so. You know? Yeah. Like, I feel like we lose all credibility if we just pretend like this movie doesn't exist on this podcast. I mean, that's how it felt when I was watching it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> watching it alone with my cat, I felt like it was wrong that I was not watching it with you three. That's, that's I, right. I, I, there was a point watching this movie where I was like, maybe I should turn this off and wait. To I thought about that again, too. You know? I thought about that too. Yeah. I was like, but should we I just all turn did it off? See, mine was, this, mine right? was in that last Wait, half I hour where I was just like... I don't, yeah. think, I don't think we said what the movie was yet. Yeah, Malignant. Yeah. Malignant. Okay. I, said, I said, okay. No. From the year. This. <laughs> directed by... The very. James Wan himself. Who we would know from. Obvious, obviously Furious 7, right? Yes. Yeah, 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 that's what I was saying. Oh, shit, Everybody no, I haven't has. seen it, no. <laughs> yeah. No, Aquaman? Yeah, Aquaman. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, I haven't seen it. I'll bet I could count on one hand the amount of James Possibly, Wan movies I've seen. You may have seen Saw or Insidious. Or, yeah. I don't know, whatever. Yeah. Saw, Insidious, Malignant. The Conjuring, I don't know. I don't know. You know, the any Conjuring. major studio horror movie of the past 15 years. Has you, been produced yeah. by James Wan. I think I got four. Yeah. And that's it. Oh, yeah. There's always the forgotten James Wan movie that nobody remembers. Let's throw a title out there called Dead S- Death Silence Sentence. Or de- uh, Death oh, Sentence. Oh, okay. That's fine. With Kevin Bacon. I forgot about <laughs> I that I thought you were going to say Dead Silence. Or... Dead Silence. Yeah. Is the, yeah. But I think people oh, are yeah. more aware of that one than Death yeah. Sentence. The, I think yeah. that was the second movie after yeah. Saw. Yeah. Okay, so everybody knows who James Wan is, and probably you're listening to this podcast because you've heard a little bit about this movie. Um, If you're anywhere near Twitter the past month, you've heard about this movie. Yeah, Yeah. so this movie didn't perform very well at the box office, but it has developed a little bit of a reputation. Mm -hmm. Uh, I remember seeing headlines directly after its opening that was like, this is the most bug nuts movie of the year, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So mm-hmm. I guess we should probably warn folks going in that we are going to assume that you have seen Malignant. Mm-hmm. We're going to spoil the living shit out of it. I yep. know it's a new movie. Uh, if you're willing to stick with us, then uh, thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And uh, at the time of this release and recording, you still have some time to watch it on HBO Max if you haven't already. So mm-hmm. multiple ways to watch it. That's right. Okay. So I guess my first question is... Um, how would you market this movie? I mean, like this is terribly. A thing. Well, okay. yeah. terribly. Well, let me ask you this then. Like when you saw the trailer for this movie, what did you think you were in store for? Well, we talked about it off mic several lot, times. Uh, we, we had all talked about, cause a lot of us are in this like kind of nebulous space of like, we're trying to avoid trailers because trailers give away too right, much. Right. And I remember we talked about the malignant trailer and we were all kind of on the fence of like, I can't tell if it looks good or not. Right. Cause I don't really know what it's about. And I got to give him credit for going that route instead of just laying the whole concept out there and spoiling it. Yes. Mm-hmm. I Major give respect him, for that. I got to give him credit because I am seeing these trailers like I, I trashed this movie. I'm like, that looks like the most boring shit in yeah. the world. Uh, purposeful, I'm guessing, considering, I mean, they knew what movie they had, so mm-hmm. right. you can't exactly. Oh, yeah. I, pre- I saw the trailer. I predetermined. I'm like, I'm not bothering with that movie. And yeah. then everyone yeah. started talking about it. I'm like, well. Yeah. That's, it, maybe I should. Yeah, that's the reason. Everyone yeah. was just like, well, you might want to see it. They knew word of mouth was going to be their best marketing. So they right. let that happen, which right. is, I really respect because I feel like, like, I mean, we've, how many trailers have we seen this year? This is like the whole movie. Or even yeah. if it's not the whole movie, it's the major twists are yeah. revealed in the trailer. I feel like you've seen the whole movie before yeah. you actually. Now there's three Halloween kills uh, trailers out, which right. I haven't watched the third which, one. I was going to say, uh, I could probably just go edit them together now <laughs> and we can watch the movie. Yeah, Probably. <laughs> but I just remember, I mean, I'm a fan of James Wan. James Wan's doing a new horror movie and I remember hearing him say in interviews that, you know, it's like, well, I've kind of gone as far as I can with the whole haunted house uh, mm-hmm. movie genre, which I mean, basically he kind of created 
I, I suppose with like the insidious movies and right. all that stuff, it's mm-hmm. like in the yeah. conjuring, that style of thing that, you know, everybody's uh, copying. Um, yeah. But he was like, I'm, I got to do something new. And then when you see that trailer, you're like, uh, it, it was extremely underwhelming, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I was attracted to it by the fact that it has his, his name on it. It was right. like, okay, I'll go see it because it's got his name on it. But in hindsight, now knowing that the movie made like, I think, $5 million in its opening weekend, yes, was hurts. there, uh, you know, I, I like that you're saying they were relying on the word of mouth. Yeah. But in hindsight, do you think that was a good idea on the studios? And if like, no, everybody's like, eh. Doesn't look good. I think this is going to be one of those rare movies that makes more money over time and becomes more and more yeah. profitable over time because word of mouth is going to keep going around. And I hope so. I, 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 I say the opposite. I say, I'll even say this. This podcast is coming out on the, I'll say the tail end of its height of popularity. I'll say. I think it's going to be, it'll come up again in the year end stuff, but. Yeah, you I don't, don't think, think this is like going up a movie wise. that it will in the future be like, where were you when you saw Malignant for the first time? Oh, I think it will. I think I don't. I think in the future it'll be reduced down to one sentence. Oh, that's that crazy blank blank movie. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's going to be yeah. that like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Malignant. That's that crazy. You know what movie? You know, mm-hmm. that's what it's going to be in the future for sure. It'll be a, a, a touchstone. It might be a little one, but it'll I, be. I, one. Yeah, I'll give you that. I think it'll be a little one. But yeah, it'll it'll be a touchstone. Well, all right. So the uh, the the. So the trailers basically make you believe that this is going to be, I guess, another James Wan movie of another some ghost type. Movie. Yeah, there's a ghost. There's possibly a girl with a imaginary friend. There's a uh, villain who looks like uh, we were saying the the Riverton Ripper from yes. uh, My Soul to Take yes. or a J Horror mm-hmm. ghost. Mm-hmm. It's somebody in a black uh, trench coat, black gloves, and with long stringy black hair on their face. And how mm-hmm. is this person related? to the uh protagonist in the movie all right so this movie um because it's someone from her past as the trailer the, mm-hmm. the trailer gave you everything that uh, everything you wouldn't want there was the the uh the old vhs footage of her talking to someone who's not there i mean you had that. a real reaction to I that did, no, yeah because i'm like this is everything i've seen ever <laughs> like what? <laughs> what i don't know because to me yeah i didn't understand the marketing because i'm like well all right if you like that sort of thing obviously but like have we seen not seen all of this before yeah, right. no like i said before this i trashed this movie to no end because i'm just like man i don't know what they're doing but mm-hmm. yeah I like that it still was intriguing enough that you watched it. Uh, you know, I mean, at least it worked on us. And I assume, like, if you're listening to this podcast, you know, it worked on you as well mm-hmm. to go like, well, oh, check it out. And then you're like, what in the holy fuck? Um, so we're saying that there is something kind of special about this movie. We'll try and uh, hold it off as long as we can. But mm-hmm. uh, I also um, heard people saying that uh, there's a lot of people that are saying, like, this is James Wan's, like, throwback movie. It's his like an 80s uh, thing it's a giallo esque movie are you seeing all those comparisons when you watch this movie yeah absolutely mm-hmm. there's 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 no star power in this movie James absolutely Wan is the star yeah. yeah yeah but to me that makes it feel even more like a throwback you know yeah. think about how many of those old weird drive-in movies we watch on the show where we're like we've heard of none of these people in them. Right. you know like, i like it better yeah personally, i do I'm not too looking like well i know who, i know who patrick wilson is and right there he is i'm like i knew none of these people so it like, lets cool. you it, it makes it more accessible right you know like yeah it, it's there's no distractions yes. you know yeah. um and so that to me was like the first thing of like okay this is meant to be like a throwback because he's like yeah we'll cast fucking anybody in this movie apparently well, I, I also assume that's like a budget uh concern i mean obviously the biggest name in it is uh annabelle uh wallace, wallace. Mm-hmm. uh she was also in the tom cruise mummy but she has uh, James Wan pedigree there because she was in annabelle <laughs> uh the first annabelle movie mm-hmm. um what was the budget on this movie? Budget was forty million. See, that's shocking to me. <laughs> it's a forty million dollar movie. Yeah, okay. there's a lot shocking. of CG. There is, mm-hmm. and the, the is, a lot. They play that very heavy in the trailers, mm-hmm. which I thought was a bad move because once you see the movie, you're like, well, it really doesn't have. You know, it's like you could have found another transition effect for what they're trying to go for there, but they're like, hey, look at all the CG that we spent all our money on. Yeah. And it, another thing it, that, that kind of turned me, me off. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was like, like oh, I didn't yeah. like that. Transforming stuff. This seems to be what we do nowadays. So. Right. Yeah. Um, 
do you know how this oh, i don't know mm-hmm. we're, like we should we should talk about the movie and then talk about like how they came up with this movie well to to what you were saying about like the throwback feel and stuff i also think like that cold open feels like it's alive to me like yeah that's what it reminded me of and it has that like panicked crazy like mm-hmm. energy in that cold open of like those 70s and 80s drive-in movies if that makes sense yeah, yeah for sure you know it, it really struck me i guess when i was watching it for some reason and this like stuck with me through the movie i mean we're saying you know the throwback portion of it i saw echoes of so many uh films but a lot of like Wes craven specifically like shocker you know yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, it felt like there was in there i mean obviously the movie's gonna owe a great debt to a uh, basket case there's <laughs> some yes. poltergeist there's some the hideaway there's uh just a whole bunch of uh of other films that you've kind of seen mm-hmm. the reason i think it it reminded me of like shocker because you know when you look at like and i know we haven't covered this on the show we've talked about it before but like shocker to me is this kind of bonkers movie where i mean that's a, a film about a, a a serial killer who's executed and becomes living electricity and is able to like travel through uh television sets and- i've never seen this i kind of want to watch it now yeah. right. oh it's on the list west yeah. craven would come up with these like fucking wild concepts and right. then you know somebody give him money to actually make these movies this is kind of what this feels like only this guy got 40 million dollars <laughs> to make his movie when you're james wan after everything he's done okay this is point, this like is definitely him like going to the studio and cashing in all his chips and be saying one for me now right yeah. oh, definitely. that's definitely yeah. what this movie is right yes. like i gave you how many franchises one, right. for me. <laughs> yeah, one for me it'll be great yeah because they're hoping i guess it just his name alone uh will sell it but i can't imagine that the people who know who james wan is and went to see like ooh, the new spooky conjuring movie got satisfied no they did those are the people that are angry on the internet right yeah this movie's very divisive on the internet very, yes, and very. The, i feel like the people that are angry are mad that they didn't get their haunted house movie that's uh, what they wanted yes. and they didn't get it you know okay yeah. Well, yes. I, meanwhile, I was angry before, and then I was like, yeah, right, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yes, okay. we were, all, I mean, we were on I'll the take. same journey, different directions, yep. you right. know, like, hey, we were both angry at some point. Yeah. <laughs> well, the cold open takes place on what is ostensibly the house on Haunted Hill. I mean, it does kind of have the, maybe that's also the thing. It has like a, a feel, a little bit of those like 90s yes. Dark Castle yes. movies. It really, it does. really does. And that budget level, maybe, mm-hmm. because I mean, those were very expensive. But I mean, the you know, you got a house on a cliff. It's a it's an insane asylum. Like it's very Arkham. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's like stormy waves crashing yeah. on it, and oh, yeah. it's like it's lightning. It's very dramatic. Like, they are playing up the horror movie imagery throughout this entire movie. I mean, you know, foggy. Uh, well, they didn't have foggy graveyards, but you know, foggy no, the fog was nights, everywhere. Yes. Foggy tunnels. Yes. Foggy tunnels. The graveyards yes. pristine. Yeah. <laughs> everywhere else there's fog. <laughs> and that fog was knee deep. Like it yeah, was, yeah, thick fog, thick yeah. fog, but just low, yeah, but low, yeah, yeah. Low, like thick silver fog. bullet. I love that kind of yeah, the old spooky low lying fog. Which yeah, um, we're introduced to. I mean, so it's a medical scene that's happening. Is like there's a lot of uh, uh, commotion. People are getting thrown stressful. through walls. What? <laughs> it's very stressful. It's a stressful <laughs> opening. Uh, I wonder. I don't know if we needed it, but it sets a tone, I guess, by. We hear a doctor saying, like, we tried to restrain him, but it seemed like he was drinking the electricity, you know, and you're yeah, like, yeah. what the <laughs> fuck is happening? And there's uh, there's light bulbs exploding all yes. over the place. And then there's a creepy voice comes through a radio mm-hmm. and a doctor is able to somehow restrain this patient who we don't get to see and says it's time, it's time to, to cut out the cancer. Yeah. And then we smash cut to this like a techno uh to a fantastic opening, opening credit <laughs> sequence which in retrospect tells the whole movie it does it but really on does. first watch you don't know <laughs> yeah, that exactly. no. yep. i like, oh, was so thing. happy with this opening sequence like yeah. it just it, i, I love the title the, i love the credits they're really doing well to, and before that the cold open they're really being like hey this is eventually this is what the movie's gonna be so you gotta be in it now like do you right. like this because this is where we're going yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, it's gory in a way because you're watching kind of like uh bodies get thrown around a room and yeah but in the in oh the yeah, credits, oh, yeah. yeah. But like it's... operation footage of you know right well you yeah. see you see what happens in the third act even that's yeah. that's yeah. the right. operation it's funny 
Yeah. yeah. I didn't realize but that I, until going back. I'm like, right, oh, yeah. that exactly. is the footage yeah. from the third exactly. act. Exactly. Right yeah. Like, you don't know it the first time around, but the second time, it's kind of fun to pick up on that. Mm-hmm. But I like that it does set the tone. It's like, all right, if this is where we're going. If you're not on board now, you're not going to like this. This ain't your like, mama's haunted yeah, house movie. Because it's like, so. <laughs> we're going to get a little silly with it. Yeah. So you got to be on board now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just dramatic. It's time to cut out the concept. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. I, okay, so I guess <laughs> bodies, bodies being thrown around a room, right. like it's, it's like gory and silly at the same time. Yeah. It's like what is happening? <laughs> Something with super strength. Something, yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, we know it's a he and it's a patient at the facility. Sure. Um, okay, so the elephant in the room is uh, a lot of uh, you know the way that this movie's been talked about. I mean, I think when even when we watched it, there was a lot of like this is either like the best or worst movie of the year, right? Because um it's is it intentionally <laughs> or unintentionally as goofy as uh we think it is i mean i <laughs> that's the question I don't that, know. that is i think i mean that is the line that this is divided on because yeah. i think this is a goofy ass movie but well, that's yeah. me yeah yeah but a lot of people are just like nope don't like that. It, it rubbed a lot of people a the lot wrong of people way. The wrong way. Yeah. yeah, it is very split on this mm-hmm. movie. A lot of people can't just like buy the ticket and take the ride. Apparently, they just like, oh, this isn't this isn't the haunted house movie I wanted, you so just, I'm off. Like, yeah, and you gotta like, well, yeah, especially if they're expecting the haunted house movie, yeah. you just gotta shift your perspective because if I try and do it for like this movie the more i think about it, the more i'm like okay this stuff would be happening in a movie from the 70s or the mm-hmm. 80s and i'd be right. like this is wild yeah, yeah. So, like, exactly why my, i think my brain is having a hard time with the new visuals yet the old right. uh, elements and i think that's yeah, what yeah, yeah. throws my brain into not liking stuff like this because i'm like ah uh, there's a fight in my head. Uh, every, uh, everyone would love this movie if it came out in 1978. I mean, Everybody probably. would love it. It'd be like yeah. a cult classic, you yeah. know? Yeah, but it, I guess the question is whether, because there, this movie is a tad uh, overdramatic in some parts, we'll say. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, whether that those parts are intentional or done, they got to be intentional. Like that, I, I think that's what it, you have to has, decide. Have to be. Yeah, have you have to, to decide. So that was intentional. We've this is seen what they James want. Bond's other work, and we know that he knows how to make a movie and how to not make it ridiculous. Yeah, okay, well, exactly. So now this is my thing because I haven't. I think he has seen, proven I think competence. Seen, right, yeah. exactly. There's that. I mean, I, I obviously not having seen a lot of his movies, but I know that because they keep giving him shit and right. like bigger shit. So I'm like, okay, he can make a movie. That's yeah. obvious. People seem think, to like working with him because they go back to working right. with him a lot. It seems like too. So. I think I've had more experience with his more ridiculous stuff. Like mm-hmm. Aquaman. Like that, or even like Dead <laughs> Silence. Like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's pretty movie ridiculous. Which I do not like. um, but so I, uh, I didn't, watching this the first time in the theaters, I'm like, I don't know, I don't know James Wan's tone. Like, I'm not familiar well, enough with his movies to know his tone, to know what his purpose is, well, if he was doing it on purpose or not. Have you seen any Insidious or Conjuring movies? I saw movies? the first Insidious a long okay, time ago. Okay, those are ago. straightforward. Yeah, I know. They're the not go- those, those are not goofy movies. Yeah, they're Dread. not goofy yeah. movies. Yeah. Dread, That's very creepy true. stuff. Yeah. But, Still effective. Uh, but the thing I think maybe that makes this one different is he actually did have a uh, hand in writing this one. The other, yeah, did, yeah. his early movies where there was a partnership there with Lee Winnell, who's now gone off. He's a director on his own, The Invisible Man and Upgrade and now uh, The Wolf Man or something, whatever he's doing. Uh, this one was co-written with, uh, well, I think story credit is uh, James Wan. Yeah, James Wan and Ingrid Bisu, Bisu I think it is. Bisu. Which is James Wan's wife. She oh, that's his wife. Also played the uh, one of the detectives in this, though. She's the, the medical, crime scene the crime scene yep. analyst with yeah, the glasses yeah, yeah. and the long hair. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the story was by them. The concept was her thing to come up with, and then um, the screenplay was written by uh, Kelly Cooper. Yeah, who has done. You would know uh, she wrote Hellfest 2018. Oh shit! Oh. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. All right then. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and yeah. a lot of TV, but. Hellfest. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that was like the most recent modern slasher movie. Um, yeah. Uh, the okay. So, so this is, I guess, this is maybe where it's like you know, James Wan in the past has done other people's stuff. This is mm-hmm. James Wan kind of doing something that James Wan. You want a straight shot of James Wan? And his wife came up yeah. with. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, obviously, the dialogue is not theirs. I imagine then it's uh, what was her name? Akela Cooper. Akela Cooper. Yeah. Akela Cooper. Yeah. So. The dialogue is very arch, let's say. One is, I mean, this time when I'm watching the movie, I'm like, he is, like, enunciating 
these over dramatic elements. He yeah. knows what he's doing. Yes. yes. You know, yes. it's like he's pushing in at the right time. He's yeah. making yeah. them, you know, like right. I was adopted. You know, yeah. I mean it's so so <laughs> popular. <laughs> 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 so so popular. I love it. Yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I think he's like he's trying to calibrate the movie as like, okay, I've been really spooky before. I'm going to be, this is fun. You're supposed yeah. to have fun watching this movie. There's right. a lot of jokes and stuff like that, or levity. I don't know how well it like lands, but right. they're trying, they're going for jokes. Um, okay. So we're introduced to, uh, so the first 30 minutes of this movie, cause I was actually, I timed it tonight. I was like, mm -hmm. okay, there's the movie's broken into three parts. There's like, Madison's story, an emotional drama, Gabriel's story, mm -hmm. and then the shocking conclusion yeah. of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it is almost like the point of view switches kind of for that second yeah. part, but we'll mm -hmm. get to it. Which makes sense. On which I was going to say, yeah. ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> so, like they flipped it around. <laughs> it's like he knew what he was doing, Colin. <laughs> Right, too many accidents. Yeah, you know watching it doing. this time. <laughs> and the so, the uh, the the cop characters. There's like this whole subplot with like these cops investigating, like what's going on. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, this is like the throwback to Saw, right? This is what he did. He always had right. cross cut with the the cops investigating. Mm -hmm. um, so Madison is Annabelle Wales, Wallace, and mm -hmm. uh, so she. We learn this whole first thirty minutes is basically mm -hmm. to set up. What? Starts with her trauma to set up why yeah. she's wearing such a wig. <laughs> that honestly, it's, that's not wrong. It's, that that it is, is what. Yeah, that is. <laughs> and that was Sean and I had the like we all watched this movie separately, and then we be, and we all were like, "Did you see that? Oh my god! Did we all? Was that like a collective fever dream, or did we see that?" And then we decided to watch it again tonight together. Yeah. But when we all watched it independently, we all had some point of the same thought: like, why is that wig so? Yeah. Yeah. Wiggy. It's yeah. So we bad. watched it. I think Michaela was the last one to watch yeah. it. And she's like, all right, I'm going to watch it now. Yeah. And then, like, five minutes in, she's like, what's going on with the wigs? I'm like, that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it so big? Because Why is there so much hair? This is a $40 million movie. Why does her wig look so bad? Right? You know, yeah. that's why you're like, okay, this. So the wig is something. Yes. Right. Yeah. I'm like, okay. And I actually Noted. thought, my, my theory, I was like, I'm going to be right, is <laughs> I thought it was. A possessed wig. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. The, the hell to pay? Yeah, yes, like that. Because it kind of ooh. Because think about it. Because the flip side of this also has the same long hair. So that's right. why I was like, it's a possessed wig. It like, kind of would have been funny <laughs> if her hair turned around when she was flipping between <laughs> characters, just yeah, slowly. Just, <laughs> yeah. That would have been good. <laughs> Amazing stories did an episode about a uh, possessed yeah. hairpiece. Oh, oh yeah, you guys. Oh, isn't there that <laughs> movie uh, Bad Hair that came out like a couple years ago? Wasn't that basically what that movie was? I remember Is that, that, about that one. Oh, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Well, um, so Madison is uh we learn that she has had several miscarriages. Right. She's currently pregnant. Mm -hmm. She has an absolute douche of a husband, boyfriend. Yes. Husband, yeah. Husband. Who at some point like is like what? What is he? I mean, it's like again. I'm tired of watching it, my children die inside you. Yeah, it's like, Jesus. you yeah. should stop getting pregnant. I mean, all the yeah. lines are very yeah. you know these are arch. Uh, like, right. Yes, yeah, very arch. And then he gets into a fight and slams her against the wall, which uh, for the rest slams of the her movie, head her head against, against the wall, the wall. which yes. puts like a hole in the drywall. Like, yeah, he whoosh, you got to push someone real hard to do that. And we get that kind of she slides down the wall at one point, and we see that big blood smear that yeah, you're like, door. right? That's you usually means you're dead and then yeah. she keeps bleeding through the entire goddamn yeah. movie yes. and like never goes to the emergency room a bleeding no. head wound this That's was pretty serious mm -hmm. this is my first like all right she she keeps bleeding something's Something's going on. Yeah, right. It's like, that's, all right. Also right. noted. It's like, okay, this head, head injury, mm, not yeah. just a head injury, right? Yeah. yeah. Right? It's like, we're not addressing this. Okay. Okay, yeah. Well, this is going to be interesting because we're going to find out, like, since we all watched it separately the initially, like, uh, at what we were thinking as this movie was going on, like, what the hell's actually going on here? Um, he's killed in a the first big, like, set piece thing. The husband. The husband. Right. And this is, like, the James Wanzian. Wanzian? Mo moment sequence of the movie that you probably are expecting with a movie bearing his name. The yeah, house sequence. I feel yeah. like yeah. this was the trailer mostly, definitely right? The trailer, right. Uh, definitely a trailer moment. Lights yeah. on, lights off. But I kind of like the, the fake house. out. Yeah, he's like, oh yeah, it's totally that movie that you wanted to see, right? Nope. I yeah, like but he out. spends a lot of time. I mean, because there's in this scene also is kind of impossible. <laughs> 
<laughs> right. We like, we like knowing right. how the movie ends, this scene doesn't work at all anymore. Yeah, because he comes downstairs and sounds are going off in the middle of the night, and then the TV's on, and then he sees a shadowy figure sitting on a couch. He turns the light on and the shadowy figure's gone, uh-huh. which Flopped we're like, the floor. okay, knowing Scurried what away. we know about <laughs> the movie later, it's like, that's impossible. Right. So I was like, so, so should we, should we just like spoil the ending now and just dissect these things as we go? Do you think we should do that? I feel like we should. Okay. <laughs> Your pick. <laughs> yeah. Just because these are the things that like, I think we need to talk about. Like okay. the, the semantics, the, Yeah. So this is how the movie goes batshit crazy at the well, I guess right. before you get there, okay. it's just there's there's a lot of this movie, I would say two thirds of it, where I mean, you know, everybody tells you that it's a bug nuts crazy movie. Right. And you sit there for about forty minutes yep. or more, maybe an hour, mm-hmm. going like, Okay, I don't get it. Yeah, right. This movie, this movie better turn around in the third act. That's what right. I was saying. Oh, yeah. Like, this was my thought watching in the theater because other than the, uh, again, because I didn't know how I was going to take it, but other than the few, you know, the needle drop with the, I was adopted. Yeah. yeah. And a few moments with the sister who's uh, uh, feels <laughs> over eager to be like there for her sister. But she, yeah. Yeah. But, she's a really supportive little sister. Yes. Very supportive. Yeah. Where was I going? I forgot. Uh, I, I lost know. my train of thought. Nope. It's fun. Uh, when you were watching the theater? Oh, when I was yeah, watching yeah. the theater. Yeah. Oh, yeah, because I was just like, all right, let's get to something bug nuts, because other than that, like, this just feels like a bad movie. A subpar yeah. movie. Uh, yeah, yeah. It just, yeah, just feels like a bad movie, so what are we doing here? Right. Well, and <laughs> we always get those, like, Stephen King tweets or something. They're always like, this movie scared the shit out of me, or this is the best movie ever. So we're used to, like, that hyperbole of right. the internet. So, like... When you hear everybody saying something's crazy, you're like, okay, is it really crazy is it though, actually crazy? or is it, is it like just internet crazy? Like, yeah, yeah. And are we all just really bored because no new movies have come out, so something's mildly crazy and we think it's amazing? You know, right. like, yeah. So yeah. I was trying to head that off. That's why I think I watched it like the night that it came out. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna watch it the first night, and then you kind of watch like. You know, what the fuck are people going to say about right. this? Yeah. And then it's like, you know, the headline articles on Monday are all, yeah. you know, like I, had, like I said, I had no interest in this. And then I heard about how crazy it was. But me going into it, I was like, OK, we'll see how crazy it is. Yeah. Like, you're full right. of shit. Yeah, yeah. Especially for I say this group, because I mean, you know, we've seen a lot. Right. And yeah. so we're just like, all right. I've seen me. some things, Throw man. Me. Well, and like you're like <laughs> your mainstream horror movie audience is like they love that paranormal shit that he normally does uh-huh. and to me that's boring as hell so mm-hmm. i'm like okay if that's their baseline their crazy might be our regular saturday night <laughs> right. stuff we want. you know right. what i'm saying like yeah which is yeah. Uh, yeah why you gotta i guess give this movie a chance yeah right um, as it were uh, sean i'm telling that to myself <laughs> <laughs> talking to past sean yeah i'm just like give it a shot man yeah. <laughs> well i guess okay so 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 we can go back and go through the movie and like try to you know, have our uh, the the things that we watch on a second viewing. Then, uh, what's going on in this movie? So, we know about Gabriel. Who's Gabriel? How do we find out about right. Gabriel? So Gabriel, we find out was her imaginary friend, so to say. Um, when she was a little girl in the a sane asylum, she was hearing voices. This Gabriel was speaking to her, telling her to do things. She was having images in her mind. Um. And then that continued when she was adopted. She was still having these visions um, and still talking to a Gabriel. And Gabriel all of a sudden has reappeared as an, as now that she's an adult. And this is most of the, the this is most of the movie is her discovering that like you know a that I used to speak to a, an imaginary friend named Gabriel mm-hmm. after like there's a Gabriel who's apparently killing people and she has a psychic link and is like somehow present in. His murder scenes. Right. Because he's killing people. She's there. She can't move. It's like sleep paralysis. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. This is where the CG yeah. transition yeah, stuff comes in. Yeah, the room like melts away into a different a different mm-hmm. environment and she's in someone else's kitchen and someone yeah. else's bed. Oh, so that bad, one yeah. was real gross. So she's like seeing these murders in real time, well, but in her head. But this is, I guess, at, at this these points in the movie, I was trying to like, I mean, I'm like, well, I mean. It's her, right? We get to see Gabriel, I guess. Right. Well, I was going to say, at what point did you start to be like, okay, it's her, but how? Because that's how I entered it. When she, I think when she kidnaps the, uh, uh, when they go to the tunnels, the underground city and all that Mm -hmm. stuff, and she kidnaps the woman. Um, I think when they go back to the attic and she's 
there with her jacket and everything. I'm just like, okay, it's it's her because it, it's a woman with dark long hair and everything. But I just didn't know how like mm-hmm. we got to that point until um, the second guy got murdered. I think is when oh, when near the red right. neon sign. The um the moment when the cop is chasing Gabriel down the fire escape is uh. the moment I figured it out. The whole thing. Okay. Yeah. There's a lot of giveaways in this. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There, yeah. I was like, okay, that's clearly someone moving very quickly backwards. Yeah. And their their joints are bending the opposite way. They're bending way. the yeah. other way. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. That is. Like, I don't I, know if I still got it, but I. Oh, I got like, it. I, in that exact moment. Um, are we ready to spoil it? Um. Are we, are we there yet? No. Yeah. I mean, I <laughs> guess so. Okay. Well, we. I feel four, like you're we hesitant. Four, I mean, no, we don't I have think to. like we don't have well, to. yeah. I think at this point, because when she's killing the red the guy near the red neon sign, like the way she mounts him on the bed, right? Like you're just like, oh, yeah, backwards. There's okay. a lot of there strange is. contortions yes. that whenever right. we see and him I, running. And or my doing first anything. thought was like, like, well, why is she backwards? And I was like, if they do a Harry Potter Sorcerer's Stone situation <laughs> and it's fucking Voldemort in the turban, <laughs> I swear to God, and fucking hell if it's not Voldemort in the turban. <laughs> <laughs> so that like this whole thing. So this is what Ingrid. Bisu, I guess, like came up with, right? She was yes. intrigued by the idea of the parasitic twin. Yes. yes. So she she has a fascination with um, medical anomalies, and she read about. I don't know if you've heard of Edward Mordake. Also, met Edward Mordrake, depending on what you've read. Mm. Um, he was an individual of nobility in the 19th century, and he was supposedly had a face on the back of his head. And legend had it that he could like whisper and like grab objects Ugh. and laugh or cry. And um, he like begged doctors to try to remove it and they never did. And he ended up killing himself at the age of like 23. Mm-hmm. So, oh, wow. But his brother lived on for another 10 years. <laughs> 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 Just dragging that body behind him. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Ingrid, Ingrid became obsessed with this story and she and James Wan was like, oh, there's a lot we could do here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's ripe for potential. <laughs> yeah. Because the last time this was maybe explored was like Stephen King's The Dark Half. I remember, mm-hmm. I think there's a scene in the book that it doesn't take place in the movie where they, you know, at the beginning there's a, they're trying to separate a twin that's like in the brain. Right. You know, uh-huh. and there's like pieces of uh, eyeball and Ooh. teeth and all that that they're taking out of this kid's brain. Um, Wonderful. Okay, but in this case, so we do get to see in like flashbacks, like Gabriel is this like puppet demon thing that's on the back <laughs> okay. of her head. The the scene where they're interviewing her and they do that slow pan around to see him on the back, I gasped. I, was, <laughs> because, like, I, I knew it was gonna I, I knew it was gonna be a parasitic twin, but I didn't expect him didn't to look know. so right. skeletal and like right. chicken like. It like, looks like the uh the smaller alien from Independence Day. Yeah. Like the yeah. one inside the medical yes. suit where it's, its arms are just out yes. like that. But his I, face I, is yeah. his face is the real I had an disturbing part. reaction. I was like, yeah. what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Like and the the way because like you're watching a lot of footage of her, which is fine. It's a good way to tell the story, I think. But that interview with her goes on for a while where yeah. they're asking a lot of questions. So you think the scene's over with then. Right. You're like, that's the end of the video. Right. And then they do the pan around the back and you're like, oh shit, this is just getting started. Like, <laughs> I think that was the moment that I really woke up in this movie. It was right, like, yeah. what the hell? <laughs> right. Last one I was just like, okay, go, um, we're here. F- let's go. Yeah. Keep going. <laughs> like, if we're going to do this, let's go. But his eyes kind of, like his face kind of looks like that like warp filter from Ringu. Like, yeah. he, like his one story. eye's really Really up high, once oh, really he, down low. He kind of looks like um, from uh, Hannibal. Uh, it looks like Mason Virgin. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's like she's got Gary Oldman on her back. <laughs> well, the doctors decide that the way that they're going to cut out the cancer, he's some kind of malignant tumor. Right. That's where the uh, mm-hmm. uh, a tumor that thinks and all this other stuff. Yep. And apparently, because he's he's sharing parts of her brain, he can uh, communicate with her through thought, and then uh, he can also make her see things. And then he imprisons and what else, her Colin? in like a, a a mental sure yeah yeah but a beyond that person. what else Colin does he have supernatural powers Michaela thoughts on the, this this <laughs> is yeah the, okay the, <laughs> like this is a huge criticism a valid criticism of this movie is that 
Gabriel, when he takes over her body, she's got fucking spin kicks and ninja <laughs> skills and, and super, strength. super strength. She can flip hospital beds. She can throw she can throw her weapon across the room it's, and hit you in the it's chest. Mom strength. Like, it's, 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 it's like my child is <laughs> under a car. <laughs> like that is the strength. Like, so much that the she takes out an entire police station and says, "Call in the national fucking guard." Oh, that was to great. Take- yeah, that was great. I, yeah. Send reinforcements. Yeah. Call the <laughs> national guard. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, like where did where does this come from? Where yeah. where does the right. broadcasting More is than thoughts? The muscle mass can handle drinking electricity yeah. is like unexplained. Yeah, can communicate telepathically with radios and TVs. Yeah, has an unknown cell phone number that can call yeah. your cell phone and talk to you that he way. He can block his ESP. Yeah. He can star 69 his ESP. Yeah, it doesn't come up scam call at all. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that, I, that the movie kind of was like, okay, at one point, like he, because they say that basically he's this, the hyper aggressive twin whenever he mm-hmm. takes over. He goes nuts, and so you see at one He's point... He's the Schwarzenegger, she's the Danny DeVito. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they try to shock him with paddles in the, in the flashback, yeah. and I'm like, oh, that's how he got his electrical powers. I don't know what I'm thinking here, yeah. but that's the only thing that there was in the movie that kind of yeah. like... All right, they shocked him. They, they supercharged somehow, him. Yeah, yeah, he absorbed They it. just gave him a power-up, that's yeah. all. <laughs> Oh man! Uh, why not? Okay, yeah, hey, sure. that all works within the realm of this movie, you know. Yeah, so maybe that's why he has super strength is because of uh, uh, the electrical jolt that he received Naturally. at the hospital. Yeah, yeah I mean, because yes. that's uh, that's uh, we should all be doing that. So they turned him into a super soldier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. what you're saying. And so the the fact that she had her head banged against the wall has like released Gabriel like, after yeah. all this time. Okay, but jolted we him skipped out of over an important part is when they're doing the surgery and they're cutting all the pieces off of him, they cut everything off, but they the face, they just take his skin off like leather face. And then they, they, <laughs> they just, do well, like, what, shove it you know, back. like that cabinet you have that has too much Tupperware in it and yeah. you have to like push it back and slam the door shut real quick yep. to keep everything in there. That's what they did with his yeah. face into her skull. They push yeah. his, literally push his face into her skull <laughs> and then push it together to close it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Eyeballs, a, mouth, and all. Like, yeah, it's yeah, like when you have too much garbage and you haven't taken it out yet. You're just like, ah, just get, just get down a little bit, get back in there. I'll take you out. Like stuffing a turkey. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's great. <laughs> just, just poking him with one. Just get in there. Just, so, but like, and so, do they think? Maybe we'll get into this later. But do they think that like, eh, if he's in her skull, it's fine? Like, because like he was still alive, right? When they did all that. I'm assuming they think. By cutting all that shit out, they like basically took most of him out. But okay. it's like his brain is still exactly connected to her brain. Right. So the, the 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 brain is still there. Right. Right. <laughs> and they're and I don't know. They they say that like he goes quiet or whatever. But how do they know that? Like right. it makes no sense. Right. It's maybe not they, like she's been studied this whole time. Right. You know. I mean, maybe they studied her after they did the surgery and they're just like, hey, how you feeling? Any, mm-hmm. uh, anything going on? She's like, oh no, I'm good. Well, there's a shock. Another shocking uh, reveal is that all of the miscarriages that she's suffered is because that's Gabriel has been eating your babies or something like that. Like, yeah. It's been powering him up this whole time. Yeah. The sister like comes batteries. off with this and you're like, what the fuck are you talking about? Okay, yeah, it makes point, sense. At what and point did the sister pick up this information? I, thought, I was just going to say, how does the how sister does she know, know this? this? <laughs> or she's just like, I think this is. He's eating your kids, like trying to get her mad. Yeah. This explains <laughs> everything. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there is. Yeah, she was just like, yeah, trying to amp her they up. They killed to, your babies. Yeah. yeah. Snap oh, out of it. The only yeah. thing, and I'm reaching here, but the sister does go on a spooky midnight expedition to the old closed down hospital and it. finds right. the record room in yeah, the basement. Yeah, that was still open in the 90s, but somehow it looks like it's from the 40s. It, it looks okay. like that American Horror Story Asylum it season does. is what it looks like, it does. but it's supposed to be. 98. It was still functioning in the 90s. And okay. all the records are still there after all this time. And so Nash, maybe yeah. she saw something and withheld it from us right. until the moment I mean, where she revealed it to Madison. Right. That's true. They, I mean, her and her mom did watch a lot of those videos Wait, together. So maybe um, it was just a scene. But she see. was a child. So how would they know? That that was the oh yeah that's yeah, true reason. okay fine yeah. just Wait, rained yeah. on the parade well she they was, she was a child so they wouldn't have known that was the reason for a miscarriage yeah they wouldn't have known about the yeah because she she didn't even know about the miscarriages remember the sister said she didn't right. even know she'd had them so yeah. I think she's just going off of because she learns that she learns about that and she learns she learns that she's been feeding off of her like it's a parasite it's a parasite yeah. 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 a parasite and she's just like she I think she just puts it together and she's like <laughs> I think she this sister feels like she declares things and if she's wrong later she's just like well oh, I she was totally close. does yeah, yeah I'll give yeah. you that yeah. for sure that is that is her character I feel arc. like it is yeah. she's just she's like 
<laughs> There's Whatever. a lot of characters in this movie. I mean, some of it I kind of liked. Uh, some of it felt like, I don't know, not necessarily extraneous, but you had a lot of people because you don't have the main character like solving the mystery on their own yeah. right. because the main character is also your villain, right? right? Right. So there has to be that scene where our heroes versus the villain, right? right? Um, so you have, there's uh, two detectives, uh, there's a sister and the mother, like characters all kind of like, uh, they have like their own subplots because like uh, the, the, the uh, forensic technician it has the hots for the detective. Yeah. That's why I laughed. When and then after the, the sister has the hots for the detective. Yeah. And he has the hots for the sister. And there's like a weird dynamic going on there. After the, the police uh, fight scene where the, uh, the uh, crime scene investigator, she comes in. She's <laughs> like, oh, Regina is like, oh, caca. She like yeah. runs back, back over to him <laughs> once she sees that he's there too. It's like, oh, you're her too. That was pretty funny. That's funny. <laughs> well, the first part of the movie, then the first 30 minutes is basically setting up that, you know, uh, She's had these miscarriages. She's suffering these visions. I don't mm -hmm. think the murders have started yet. That's the second part of the movie where the we the mystery woman at the time who turns out to be the mother is abducted because she works in the, the sunken right. uh, the under Seattle, which we also saw in the Night Stalker way back in the day. I think that was the last time a horror thing actually went like into the it's a real thing. Oh, yeah. yeah no, yeah. they should do. Yeah, more. it's a real thing. Yeah. Uh, and then we go on this kind of 30 minute thing where these people are being murdered. Gabriel's killing these people. Uh, Madison is, is watching them mm -hmm. because this is like, it is almost like this is Gabriel's story, right? Right. Cause it was like the first 30 minutes is one movie, mm -hmm. right? And then the second 30 minutes is like, okay, this is basket case. I mean, it is the plot of basket case. <laughs> you separated us. Now I'm going after all of you who did it. The yes. doctors mm -hmm. who performed the operation yes. and the mother, because I think that was, I was like, the fact that we kept cutting back to the mother, he doesn't kill her. We don't know who she is. She's just this lady right. who works down there in right. the, in the underground. And then he ties her up in this, like, uh, you know, it looks like an industrial, like a warehouse yeah, kind of thing. Attic. That's how it looks. Cro uh, yeah. Loft yeah. thing with a bunch of the, all the tools and all. That. Usually, you'd find this in like a shed or a garage. But yes, this is the, the lair of the killer. Yes, which we don't know where that is at this point because you're not supposed to know they're uh, attached. And later, it finds out. We find out that this is the uh, attic space of Madison's home. Right. That Gabriel's had. Uh, it would have been amazing if they had just heard all the noise up there the entire time. They're just like. Hmm. What's yeah. going on up there? What is it? What's happening? Because, I mean, like, this lady didn't make any uh, noise while she was all uh, tied up, uh, you know? I guess not. Right. I mean, it's a big, we discussed as watching the movie, it's a big house. So maybe the sound <laughs> it a big like, doesn't off carry house. from yeah. that far up. Because she falls, she should be dead. She falls a very long way through a coffee table. Yeah. <laughs> she falls a really long way. A really yeah. Long way. <laughs> that was it's another one of those, like, fall. crazy dramatic moments. Yeah. <laughs> Which, once again, if that happened in real life, horrifying. My God, if someone just fell through the ceiling right now, which when they first show that living room when like the husbands and everything that ceiling does not look that high doesn't how, feel, yeah, how doesn't many feel floors are in this house because it feels like at least three right, right. this is a McAllister situation yeah. right where they got feels three like floors yeah. we, we never go down in the basement do we have the house no Don't but we so. get this uh, James Wan does this like I mean it's a show off he shot for no good reason it was like are you trying to show the geography of the house it's an overhead shot yeah that mm -hmm. follows I love that her shot. from like the well, like we could see all the way down into the first level. It was like a cutaway stairs. top down view, like a dollhouse view. It yeah. was yeah. really cool. Yeah, like that. Minority Report or Snake Eyes or something like that, where you're going over the top of the, the set, you know, all the interconnected sets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good, well, yeah, it's a good shot. And I like that. But it also makes it, to me, his stuff feels stagey. This, I think this is part of it. Shots like this. I, again, I like the shot, but yeah, a well, little stagey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, he didn't, uh, no wonders, I don't think, in this one. But, I mean, that's like, I guess if you have this money, you're doing these crazy camera calisthenics. Um, but, yeah, there was the question of, like, well, who is this woman? Why do we keep cutting back right. to her? He doesn't kill her. Then it's like, well, he's got to be, she's got to be, like, the mother, right? Mm. Yeah, these, she has the same bad wig. <laughs> yeah, all, <laughs> yeah, all same bad wigs, all same haircut. Yeah, the haircut runs it's, in the family. It's illegal to not have bangs in this universe. Everyone so. has Clearly, to have yeah. bangs. Yes. 
I think that's what they, I think they did that. On, well, obviously they did it on purpose to like, well, this is how she's going to look. So we got to blend her in with all the other characters. So her wig doesn't look too out of place when we <laughs> yeah. reveal she has a brother on her head. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to blend in. Well, this is revealed in like the, cra- so it's like we're cutting between two scenes when the big reveal actually happens. Mm-hmm. It's the sister in, and the, the adopted mom are watching like the videos that they stole from the yeah. asylum. Mm-hmm. So you get in the backstory. But then at the same time, Madison's been locked up because it looks like she did it. Oh. Even though Gabriel calls uh, the detectives during the interrogation. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they don't let her off for that. No, because, I mean, they you wouldn't just, be, she's, just let yeah. someone go. She's still a person of interest. Right. Yeah. You know? She's mm-hmm. still probably the main suspect. So, oh, yeah. Well, she paid like, someone okay, to, call the, this to is, call the phone. Yeah. They're like, well, it happened in your lights. house. You know him. He's calling you. You're probably in on this, right? Mm-hmm. Like, they can't let her go. No. That was another great line. The, You're telling me that the killer is your imaginary friend. That was a pretty good one. That was one. a good one. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And also that uh, we got to put a, out an APB on Sloth from the Goonies. That was, yeah. I legitimately <laughs> laughed at I love that, that, yeah. Another Warner Brothers movie, so yeah. that's why you can do it. Um, so anyway, so she gets locked up in the jail cell that time forgot. Yeah, why? <laughs> why? They're like, why did time forget it? it? Look, yeah, I, oh. These all look like extras from those 70s women in prison movies. That's yeah. why. <laughs> yeah. I think like another, another throwback to those movies. Yeah. Like, I'm going to go yeah. find some of those characters. They all look like sex workers and street toughs. And, yeah. yeah. And Zoe Bell is one of them uh, from uh, Death Proof. Uh, yeah. The stunt double from Kill Bill. Mm-hmm. Um, and in this scene, I think the women are beating up uh madison right and so gabriel takes over if you're in jail you're aggressive of, uh, as hell yeah apparently. they just like stomp just, the fuck out yeah, of her just for just fun like, yeah i'm just gonna kill you yeah, yeah there's no okay? guards or anything no nothing takes it takes it no the police are very lackadaisical at this first there's the fight and there's you know what comes after yeah it takes a while to get there but the choreography of the editing of this is like pretty good because you yes. have the yeah. it's like you're watching the reveal uh of the videotape uh you know of the doctor's the reveal of the the parasitic twin and mm-hmm. you're like what the fuck and then mm-hmm. that cuts to like her in the jail cell and gabriel coming out the back of her head yeah, <laughs> yeah. and you're like amazing what the fuck and that's yeah. that's what the, that's why after so much of the movie where it's it's a little uh the tone is uh much less is much more calm until we and so when we get to this part like this is when i said i was just like oh shit go 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 yeah like it's, it's chaos when from they here go and for out. it they fucking they go for it all at once like yeah. oh again it all comes together at this one apex point and they just go nuts after this point you can hear the movie shifting into the third act and like into a way higher gear that like oh, yeah. at this exact yeah. moment uh, you're like oh now now the craziness is starting yes. right yeah, because that's like pretty much immediately followed by this uh, <laughs> massive. I mean, this is where it's like, okay, this is the director of Aquaman doing this, this big uh, Matrix like. Uh, it's not a shootout. It Gabriel goes into a knife, knife out, it's a knife out, a ninja it's just kick a, out. It's yeah. just a fight scene. Yeah, it's like she's, a, I guess like the cops are shooting. Around the, the cops a, does shoot, but she's breaking arms and it legs. It is a massacre. And, yeah, and just in the grab, police station. just grabbing the, pieces yeah. of neck. It's like yeah, the entire police department. Yeah. On top of everybody in that jail cell, <laughs> like this body count is higher than any slasher movie, right? Yeah. Like Jesus yeah, Christ, it's pretty gory. She cuts off one guy's arm and throws it at another guy. She's yeah. breaking wrists <laughs> off. I mean, yeah. it's gory. I yeah. mean, it's yeah. great. It's, it's, somebody it's in the face and quick gory. Yeah. It's great. We don't linger on it at all, but <laughs> right. it, is, uh, it is fun. Thro- I think uh, throws a chair all the way across the oh, office. Yeah, what a chair shot. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> this is a punctuation before you leave. Yeah. Um. I think uh, I think all the women in the jail cell. I think it's uh, it's almost perfect because they're having Zoe Bell's having the reaction everyone in the theater should be having at that moment. Like, right. what the fuck is this shit? Yeah. Like, as lights explode and people are murdered yeah, around her. Those are the moments where backwards. I'm like, this is where I, you know that James Wan knew what he was doing because, yes. like, oh, yeah. the, they're. I mean, if you just watch their reactions, it's so over the top, you know, mm-hmm. bug eyed going like, like linger- yeah, yes, lingering. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Which yeah. for all we know happens in real life. I don't know. I've never been attacked by a reverse person. Before. Right. Because yeah. how would you do this seriously and be scary with it? I guess. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got to decide to not try and go no, for scary. Because like, 
I don't think there is a way because her face with her eyes closed on the back of his head while he's spinning around doing oh, his yeah. kicks. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> it just looks like a mask it's like it, taped to the back of someone's head while they're jumping around. Yeah. <laughs> Because yep. I think it was. I was like, you want me to tell you what yeah. it was? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it had to be at a certain point, yeah. So it was uh, the choreographer Marina Mazipa. She was a kind of a um, like contortionist dancer. Um, she did that entire jail cell scene like without CGI. That's actually her choreograph. That's crazy. Like, doing everything backwards. Mm. So she is going backwards. She's going backwards, and she had a prosthetic of Annabelle Wallace's face on her face. On on her face, not on, her on the face. back of her head. On, on her face. Her face. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so she's performing. Yeah, she's it actually crazy. doing it backwards. Yeah. James okay. Wan thought he was going to have to CGI the fuck out of it, and yeah. he said it was perfect the way she did it. That's awesome. See, that's the yeah. thing. It's like because there is a scene. There's a, a chase scene that happens. I think when we first see like uh, Gabriel's parkour skills. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, digital. Oh yes, the detective <laughs> chasing after. Yeah, there's the digital stunt double in there. So like, yeah. once they it looks do like that, the, from the first Spider-Man movie when they're kind of the, <laughs> yeah. they're a little wobbly, a little rubbery. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but once they do that, doesn't it kind of like be like, well, I know I'm being there's digital trickery in here. And this is like also my problem. Yes, continue. I'm sorry, but well, I mean, yeah, I mean, what's what's your problem? It, with it? Well, yeah, it's just like I know that uh, on top of the fact I know a person can have their resorb twin on the back of their head and have them take control of their body. <laughs> that all being said. <laughs> It just makes it look uh, unreal. Because, again, it looks like a rubbery person doing things. Like, it's unnatural. Does the unnaturalness play into the movie? The CGI uh, stuttery jumpiness of it. Does does that help or does it... Uh, for everybody else, it doesn't help me. But does it work I, for you guys in presenting that character? I don't hate it because of how much he used prosthetics and puppetry for the close-up stuff. Mm -hmm. Like... Anytime we see Gabriel's face, like that's that's all prosthetics, that's all puppet. Like, so there's it, some CG in there when, he, especially oh yeah. when yeah. he's talking at that. Some, yeah. yeah, but a lot of it is is um, practical effects, which I really appreciate, and I think it, I think they pull it off. The, I think they pull off the combination. I'm not so offended by the CGI. Okay, yeah, well, didn't, uh, yeah. I I I never even got to that point because I was just hung up on why does he have ninja skills? <laughs> right. And then I didn't even think about what it was right. looking like. I was just like, why can he do that at all? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I agree. Maybe it's yeah. just after years of being dormant, it's just like I don't usually do yeah, this, I know, but I'm gonna try to work shit. out. I want, I got this body. Now I want like bonus footage of like her sitting in the asylum and behind her is Gabriel watching nothing but Bruce Lee. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah exactly. right. But still, right? you have to try out like what your range of motion is. You kind of kind of have to work your way. Whatever. Especially you just doing it backwards, do stuff. right? Yeah. 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 I guess my only problem with the CGI thing is once you see that and then you hear that there's a you know a a, a, a stunt. Chore or not a choreographer. What are we saying? Uh, not a mime. Contortionist. Contortionist. Yeah. Thank you very much. Who can actually yeah, do not. all this stuff for real? I'm like, well, that's impressive. Yes. But I didn't think they were doing it for real when I saw the movie because they had set up that, you know, we're going to do some of it CG. It, uh -huh. it, I guess that's, you know, I don't know. Just in, in my mind, it's like that takes away from the performance because I was like, well, you're probably tricking me. Then you find out, no, they did it for real. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, that's, you know, impressive. Yeah. I yeah. wish we could have seen it that way, but um, <clears throat> it's in the movie. Uh, <laughs> so she slaughters all the people in this, uh, in the police station. Mm -hmm. She gets her costume back as well. Yeah. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Cause it Cause she got to have that coat. Yeah. Got to yeah. have that coat. Gotta have that with, coat. With that's what. And everything. <laughs> the coat is what made that fight scene even funnier because he has like the collar popped. So over the face. Yeah, over the face. face yeah. So you just see there her nose up sticking out of the back of this like coat and it just looks. Yeah. That was, yeah, that was <laughs> the funniest part. I'm so like, that, is, that is just a head yeah. sitting on the back of it. But that's the thing, I guess. Like, is it. So it's not like there's no horror to this. It's no. funny to see. The sleeping woman on the back of this murderous, you know, yeah. rampaging <laughs> Pretty killer. Pretty much. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's, uh, it's joyful. Yeah. <laughs> it's not scary. Yeah. And I'm trying to look. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was joyful in the moment. Maybe that's it. Because I also had the same reaction. That this is like goofy fun. Like, yeah. you know, it's like, this is crazy cool. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're like, it's ridiculous. Yes. Um, I don't think uh, before we get into the end here, because obviously Gabriel's whole thing is I want to kill the mother last. I killed all right. the doctors. Yeah. Right. right. Now I'm going to kill the mom and the adopted sister who she loved more than me or whatever. Right. Mm. Madison loved the sister more than me, right? So I'm gonna kill her. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I was gonna kill you last or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. He says, um, 
But this doesn't explain what we were going to talk about, like the nitpicking stuff that we had, like in the beginning of the movie, where mm-hmm. there is that haunting kind of scene, right? Right, which we see as the husband when he before he gets murdered, going through that, you know, sees the spooky figure that disappears when he turns the lights on, and then we there's a close up of the couch, and it looks like some invisible figure has just stood up out of the couch. Right. That's how quick he can move, Colin. <laughs> is that what happened? I, I fuck if I know. That's the best explanation I got. I mean, they are cheating in this scene, I believe, because also when we, uh, when the f- husband finally does get killed, what we see of Gabriel is, it's digitally altered. Like, it is, it is, it looks like a black ghost. Right. Like, yeah. on purpose. I think they are cheating at that point. Mm-hmm. Because we know it's not. But, it's got to be cheating because I don't think they really give another explanation for it. We can all say it's like, well, it's in her head. It can be whatever she wants. We can be um, unreliable narrators at this point, I guess. But it you know, feels like a cheat to me. It looks like a ghost. It's made to set up to look like a ghost. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, yeah. I mean, you could explain it as like, you know, as we learn later, she, her perspective, like she's present during the, the murders, but mm. can't move. Although that's not mm-hmm. seen in this in this moment. Um, so it's like she could be sleeping or, you know, right. And Gabriel has taken over. Yeah. But like the scene is shot in a way that the husband should be able to see his assailant. Right. But doesn't. Right. You know, yeah. but maybe, and then maybe, you know, maybe this movie needs it. Maybe it hit the cutting room floor, but maybe there was a scene towards the end when she's like either when she's getting hypnotized or whatever, where we see that scene again. But from how it actually happened, instead of, and then you just go with the unreliable narrator kind of right. thr- thing. I'm yeah, kind of surprised well, they didn't do that. Yeah, that's something you see. Yep. I agree. Well, I mean, we kind of saw that at the end. Yeah, they, they, because we do see that scene yeah. again, but it's the same scene that you saw. But you the can first see time. her face this time. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. They do make it a, because they do do quick flashbacks to those yeah. other previous moments. They think, do make yeah. it a little clearer of what is happening. Yeah, I think things. that doctor's like explanation is just, or was it the, was it, the, I think the doctor's explanation is just supposed to excuse what happened in the movie, even though it's like yeah. plot hole, mm-hmm. like that you could drive a truck through and right yeah. there. Cause, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I th- yeah, and they set it up as well. Well, they also, they're just like, if you have problems with the movie, you can also just be like, yeah, but he messes with uh, electricity and he can project his voice. Exactly. So what are you complaining about? Yeah. I think right. it's a safety precaution. Uh, whether it's purposely built in for that reason, I don't know. Because uh, I'm kind of wondering, like, why is the electricity thing in there? That I don't know. Right. Is, I guess it, so he can speak somehow? I feel like it is a need to, well, s- stuff like that. I feel like they need That's to be able it. to express stuff or, I mean, it may be even just convenience yeah. of, like, well, we the, need this to happen in order for the well, it's story. Yeah. And there's, there's moments that, like, it expresses, like, her switch. Yeah. You know, like, she'll when she gets angry in the in the holding cell and everything explodes, mm-hmm. you know, it, it does represent that switch. And I suppose that he needs to be able to express himself because yeah. the movie is trying to trick you into thinking that there's two people. True. You know, so it's like, well, right. if he's talking while she, you know, is he calling her on the phone? Right. Then it can't be her. You know, she's right. talking to somebody on the phone. It's when, not her. <laughs> yeah. Which I think the, you have to do these. Otherwise, you can't pull off the fact that he's back. Was then. anyone else the second time around watching in the, when she's on the phone in the bathroom at the, were you watching yeah. the mirror in her back? Well, yeah. Head? Yeah. Yes. Watching the mirror. The whole time. I was like, is her hair moving? The whole time. That's what I was yes. I'm like, I'm looking at the hair because we're doing this <laughs> down here. I'm just like, I'm seeing if they give anything away in that he's moment. Right they back don't. there talking to her. Right. Yeah. I'm like, I know where he is. He's there. He's I was right looking there. at the same thing. And then you pick up on a lot of jokes the second time. Like he was, he told me he was a figment of my imagination yep. in the back of my head. Something I buried yeah. in the way back of my head. <laughs> <laughs> just like ah which actually is second viewing those jokes pay yeah i mean they well yes it's pretty yeah. funny yeah. yes if not and they're giveaways the first if you're looking at it right. the first time through you're just like i see this head <laughs> i know what you're doing she's still bleeding and they have like i i actually I, for some reason thought that they actually did have the song the pixie song where is my mind in is the end credits, the but that it they incorporated into the theme of the movie. Mm-hmm. Like there's many times the music is actually playing uh, yeah. that music, and you're like, uh, okay, I get it. <laughs> Where is my mind? But there was no like cover version at the end. Um, so the climactic thing, like she ends up, uh, Madison is able to defeat Gabriel through sheer willpower. 
I, this is my yeah. this is my other <laughs> it's pretty yeah, much it. that's, that's problem. It. It's just like I, I've I've decided to overcome it. It really was the he ate yeah. your babies thing that is really yeah, oh that threw her over the top. Oh yeah, yeah. over the top. But it Gave is her superpower. It is just a like all right. I've, it was I've always up the my body. Fight. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the switch. So yeah. So I mean, because basically, it's like then she's able to imprison him in the 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 mind palace or whatever. Yes. <laughs> And she takes over and like, okay, I'm in, in control. This feels like something that would have happened in the Manitou, doesn't it? Like, yeah, yeah. You know, it does. It, it, it really would, does. It would feel right at home in that movie. You know? <laughs> right. This is the, the bigger the thing, budget. Yeah, Manitou. jumps back onto her neck and then just slowly. You won't get rid of me forever. <laughs> but next time I'll be ready. Yeah, next time, gadget. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. That was uh, on that point one, dialogue. Yeah. <laughs> Oof, man. Slam but, the, the cell yikes. door. And, okay, here's here's another problem with me because they they hurry up and get out because they can't let you think about it anymore, right? Right. Because if you keep thinking, you're like, wait, but everyone that knows anything important about this is dead except you, your sister, and your mom. Who yeah. like you're not going to be credible on the stand. Mm -hmm. This bitch is still going to death. I was row. like, she's going to jail. Yeah, yeah like, she's uh, killed she's, everyone in the police station. Right. Yeah, her yeah, body counts over a hundred. Not at this a happy point. Yeah, yeah. Well, I suppose the detectives know that they were attacked. They're by dead. Her. No, they're not. No, they're still alive. No, they're still alive. But the, the guy at the end there that got the thing in his the the trophy to his heart. Yeah, that right? was in his shoulder. I think got it. That was in his shoulder. But like, we never cut back to him to confirm. We don't ever cut alive. back. No, it just ends. Yeah, don't they cut back to them like if this is something? No, that was before that. Talking the very end of the movie. In the hospital. In the hospital. He throws the oh. thing. He throws yeah. the thing. Because he shows up to yeah. shoot her. Yeah. And then she throws the thing at him. Oh, he's in the hallway. Right. Yeah. That's the last we see of him. Oh. And, she's and we got never cut, cut back stomach. to them after that. So... Because the movie just ends. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> so if the three of them are the only ones left alive... They, they are all going to yeah, death row. The court case is really yeah. great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. And she has no evidence of this, right? Unless she can, can she will Gabriel like, to oh, wait, show up on. on the stand? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I suppose she could. But that would be dangerous. Yeah. But, yeah. We'll take a scan of my head. You'll see the face in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But well, that doesn't explain your super strength and uh, ability to project yeah. electricity. <laughs> yeah. Ninja skills. Yeah. Yeah. There is. Uh, I like the uh, the the final shot of this movie is in the hospital room, and James Wan is a sneaky bastard. He pans over to a light bulb, right? Mm -hmm. Like Gabriel's defeated and all this stuff. Everybody's hugging. Mm -hmm. Pan over to a, a desk lamp, and we just sit on it. And you're like, I've seen enough fucking Freddy Krueger movies to know that that light's gonna come on or flicker or do yeah. something to show that he's back and then just cuts to black and I'm like, oh, nice. He's <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. you know? laughs> was... like, uh, no, it's over. Yeah. So yeah. It's done. Because he hangs on that thing you're like, uh? Yeah. And you can hear it, you too. Hear like, it. He you puts hear the, the hum in there anyway. Yeah. Just like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> mm -hmm. I like it. It's great. Uh, I think in the sequel, when there is one, We should Gabriel, put Gabriel on the stand. I got it. I, got I think it. Gabriel should come out of her body. Oh, okay. I think that is the up moment. I think he regrows himself, but he comes out like the little thing that was on the back of her. <laughs> I got the sequel. Okay. So at least how we open it, right? Yeah. Okay. So she's she's on trial. She, sure. she's, yes. she's, yeah. she's being sentenced. She's, she's going to death be, row. Yeah. They go to put her in the electric chair. They put the helmet on her. <laughs> and it and brings to life. charges Gabriel and then yes. she busts out and kills everyone's on the loose again. <laughs> <laughs> Copyright 2021 okay, okay, Saturday okay. Freak now, Show. Genius. I love this. Yeah. But where do we get, like, what is... Yeah, what, what's Gabriel's... What's, what's, what does he yeah, want to do? Well, well, he wants now to... the U.S. military's got to get involved, right? <laughs> yeah. Hands Call down. the yeah. president. Yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah. We'll see, I think, then he goes on a thing, I think, to be his own person. Mm -hmm. I think he's trying to, like, either come out or get his own body. I think, it, yeah, I think... Yeah. I think this... Because he falls in love with a surgeon, she's going to be okay, able to... Okay, you stop. Okay. All right, uh, get out. Uh, that's that's, right. that's but enough. I, but again, that's the sequel, I think. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay. All right. Uh, well... <laughs> Well, yeah. do we want a sequel? Let's, and yeah. and because like this case is so crazy, everyone in the world is like watching her be put to death. It's like a nationwide special news event, you know. The and then first, so the first live execution. Well, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so everyone across the like you can even do that cut to Times Square and people are watching it. It seems morbid, although yeah. like we're just making a special. Yeah. Uh, okay, a special this time. Would this of, not yeah. be the biggest news story in the fucking world? The, I mean, this if, lady's if defense just... is the. Face on the back of her head made her kill people. <laughs> Security footage from the yeah. yeah yeah like I would be watching the shit out of this live oh, yeah. stream the whole oh, God, court yes. case yeah I think they need to do it I think they even they need to go crazier <laughs> yeah malignant too James Wan yeah yep. hire us <laughs> <laughs> right. just, just go bigger, I, think you, I think that's what you call it 
Colin, I think you say just malignant to James Wan. I think you just have to start his fucking name in the title at this point. <laughs> yeah, when does he get like James Wan's malignant? Uh, James, James Wan's something malignant. like that. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, I guess we're gonna go around the room and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie. But before we do that, we're gonna answer some of your mail. We got a full mail bag tonight, so uh, hopefully Igor's back can take it. Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Have we ever? He is. Igor the, is the reverse. The twin. He is Igor the twin. is the yeah. twin. I think we all had the same thought. Yeah, he is the twin. <laughs> One what? day we're gonna we're gonna meet Jeff and it's gonna be great. <laughs> it's like, he's like, oh hello. He's gonna be a uh, super Jeff. normal dude. I'm yeah, sorry. I know I'm not around a lot, but I'm always here. Yeah, Ryan, why not? Uh, so we should probably remind people how they can get a hold of us uh, to participate in this interactive portion of the show by following along on Facebook, facebook.com slash Saturday at Freak Show, or Twitter at Sat Freak Show, or email Saturday at Freak Show Yahoo.com. Or on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak uh, Show cool. Wall of Fame, wants us to know that uh, Paula Marshall is on the Wall of Fame for tonight's movie because she played Beverly. I'm not entirely sure which character Beverly was, mm. but she was also in Hellraiser 3, Hell on Earth as Terry. That was the uh, like the goth uh, chick in, in, in Hellraiser 3, and she was in I Know Who Killed Me. <laughs> Which was one of Michaela's favorite yeah. movies. So there you go. Uh, favorite. One of my favorite movies now. Favorite movie. Also, we identified it as an American Jello movie. Yep. Okay. Uh, anyway, uh, about tonight's movie, Malignant uh, Robin Lineman Silverberg says, Oh, man, do not watch any trailers or reviews. Go into this as unknowing and as blind as you can. It's completely bonkers. And I loved it. Yeah, yes, going go. blind. Absolutely. <laughs> Don't listen to us. It's going to get harder to do yeah, as time goes on, so do it now. I yeah. know, right? If you've listened to this episode, we're sorry. Yeah. Uh, well, we warned you. We, warned we did you. warn you. Yeah. Don't, yeah. Don't, don't apologize. Uh, Pat Hetfield writes in and says, I'm so happy to hear that you're going to be talking about Malignant because based on other reviews that talk about the story, it sounds deliciously, deliriously insane. <laughs> and when a movie achieves this kind of craziness, I achieve what can only be described as something akin to a type of nervous. Nirvana. This type of cinematic <laughs> lunacy seems exactly the, like the type of movie for which the Saturday Night Freak Show was created. I hope you engage in your traditional deep dive discussions about the ramifications and the what if scenarios <laughs> the main concept suggests, as that's the one of the main things I like about your show. Well, and it's something I don't think any other B movie discussion show provides. Oh, wow. Thanks, oh, that's so nice. Oh, they like our digressions. Oh, <laughs> you're my favorite. <laughs> Uh, Joey Blythe says, I just finished watching the movie without any prior knowledge as Ooh. to what I was watching. That's you do it. Nice. Excellent movie with an occasional odd dialogue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Occasionally, yeah. Occasional. That's for a while. Yeah. Uh, Nelson Nascimento says it's sort of a basket case for modern audiences. Overall, a pretty fun ride. Yep, I, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, modern, that's a that's pretty high praise too. Modern basket case. Modern basket case. Uh, Michael Whitaker says I hear it's pretty nuts. It's still unclear if that was by design or by accident. Either way, it should make an interesting episode. Yes, Owen, agreed. Owen Johnson says we never get camp. It's either on the indie yeah. market and it's never on the big screen. Seems like we've been getting, or it seems like we've been in a ghost slash haunting slump for some time. This gave me hope. It's either artsy, fartsy stuff from A24 or Blumhouse. <laughs> Say what you want about James Wan, but the guy knows horror. Maybe in a couple of years, I might look back and nitpick, nitpick it. But as of right now, I love this movie. I hope you enjoy this one. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It, and it was nice to see something that was like an original story for once, too. Like, you know, not another one in a franchise. Yeah, not a sequel, not a, not a prequel, yeah, it whatever. Was like yeah, an original horror nope, story. Nope, just the start of a franchise. Yeah, original. I mean, I mean it's okay. okay. well, not based on an existing property. Basket case. Nah, okay, I see what nah, you're saying, though. Nah. Okay. Yes. Uh, Grant yeah. Paris says, oh, my God, I just watched this, and I determined about 10 minutes into it that they must be doing something with her head because that <laughs> wig was so terrible. Yep. It had to be plot related. Yes. yes. I know. It's distractingly bad. So bad. It's, yeah. It's and big, she's it's, blonde it's, like in every other yeah, movie. This is, yeah. 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 I also blonde. didn't know this. I just found this out. So I'm just like, okay, that really is a wig. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. She's blonde. Yeah. Uh, Anthony Levia says, two words. 
police station. <laughs> right? Because it's quite a balance of borrowed tropes from past horror films, but yes. it has enough creative developments to make it an entertaining watch. There you go. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Novato Judoka says, what part made you laugh at li- all laugh out loud? Hitting the chair shot across the room was pretty great. <laughs> that was a good one. That's, um, that's that was a good, good one. The adoption scene. The adoption yeah. She was telling her sister that she was adopted. <laughs> yeah, that, that made me laugh. It's just because of, yeah, he does little small dramatic <laughs> zooms in and just her, that the actress who plays her sister is just made to be overly, <laughs> like overly dramatic looks. Like yeah. I was just watching her every time something was happening and just her face reacting to stuff is pretty and fun. The, for, the first time I watched this, the, in the cold open, when we cut to like the plastic sheet that's covering like Gabriel, mm. the way you see him through the plastic sheet is pretty funny because he looks like a little chicken. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he does. yeah, he does. Yeah. The sister is she plays like a princess for you know like um some kids like, oh, a, yeah, like she, a birthday party kind of place yeah, yeah, but she's like always going to auditions planet. and i'm like where are we because we're in seattle. seattle well there's actresses in seattle yeah. is there like a big film industry in seattle i mean big any, any big city has that yeah right <laughs> you'll have to tell us i feel like she gets really overzealous in uh auditions uh i think I feel like she brought a lot of herself to this character. <laughs> like she's just a really yeah. over eager. It feels like her character got this part, if you know what I mean. Yeah, the, yeah. Those In details. Sort of way. <laughs> those details about her character seemed kind of unnecessary, but I wasn't bothered by it. You yeah, know, like, yeah. But I was like, "What's the point of this?" You right. Know? Yeah. But, but like, none of the other characters. Nobody else felt like a character. It's weird. Yeah. It's a weird feeling I had towards some of these people. Like I know the cops, what you're they don't yeah. feel like. Yeah, it's just weird. Yeah. They're in there. Well, it was he just ju- like vehicles for a story. Yeah, like, but he, wasn't, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. The, like creating the love triangle or the attraction triangle between like yeah. the, like this is trying to give them more than just you know okay they're they're exposition devices. They're right. the ones who have to like investigate this. Right, thing. right. And the sister, what? Are, I knew you hired psychics because yeah. I played on a cop <laughs> show once. They told and they, me it was yeah, real. they told me it was true. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I knew it. Like, <laughs> she's not when, a psychic. when she was like, "I knew it," that did make me laugh. Yeah, because yeah. I saw her. I'm just like, "Why is she smiling right now?" They're giving her terrible news. Yeah. It's like all the psychic <laughs> makes sense. Um, Jacob Cotner says, "Wow, wow, 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 wow! I had no idea what I was getting into with this movie." ridiculous is the best word i can find to describe it i laughed all the way through and constantly had to pause the movie just to make sure that my wife was seeing the same bat shit plot holes i was seeing (laughs) that being said it was a thoroughly entertaining and bold and bold with great cinematography it's like the director of aquaman made a basket case reimagining oh wait that's exactly what it is (laughs) keep freaking freakers Mm. love it uh, RD64109 says a sophisticated remake of Basket Case or back, Basket Case. Uh, the ending was such a callback to Nancy in a Nightmare on Elm Street with her turning the, her back on Freddy. Question, who had the better pacemaker death? Gabriel and Malignant or Mary Lou in Prom Night 3? Last Kiss. Ooh, oh. I have not seen. Yeah, I haven't seen Prom, Prom Night 3. 3. We'll have to watch it just for the pacemaker yeah. comparison. No, we you saw it. We watched Prom Night 2. Didn't we? we watched yeah, Prom yeah. Night 2. You've yeah. shamed us all, Artie. I hate to say it, but we have not seen <laughs> oh, damn. Prom Night <laughs> now 3. Now I want to, though. Know. It sounds like <laughs> yeah. you just figured out Sean's pick. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> uh, G Money says he saw Shades of Jalos and The Killer from Cherry Falls. Also reminded me of The Dark Half, which oh, had yeah. a similar excellent reveal of an eye in the brain. Kept thinking of the little guy who looked like Kuato from Total Recall, too. I love this monster design and the concept. James Wan is up there with Mike Flanagan in consistency. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, they both for sure. Great batting averages. Mm-hmm. you seen Midnight Mass? I have. The whole thing? Yep. Okay. We'll talk about <laughs> uh, Kryptonian Orphan says this movie was so much fun. It was like a big budget sci fi B movie, and I loved it. Sci fi of the channel. Right. The, Siffy. Siffy. Uh, so many plot holes, but who cares? We need a little levity and escapism on our lives, especially now. And thank you, Holly, for bringing this to the freak show. It was my honor. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. Uh, the Film Effect podcast says, I love, I love how James Wan channeled his inner Sam Raimi for this effort, taking a great concept that borrows from Basket Case and Running Wild. Yep. Did anyone else feel the ending took from the original Nightmare on Elm Street? Just an observation. We're fans of this, and we plan to cover it next month. 
Yeah, I can see yeah. it. Yeah, I feel like you're not alone on that. Yeah. We've had a couple people mention that. Mm-hmm. Uh, Films or Ghosts says that this is a movie made for the Freak Show Squad. Oh, agreed. Oh, yeah. hey, hey. <laughs> uh, last week we watched a movie called Ring You, or Ring, depending on where in the world you are. Carson Snar said, I own this on VHS and I only watched it once. I need to give it a rewatch. Uh, how long ago you watched that? <laughs> And I'm it's more than seven, seven days. <laughs> seven days. <laughs> Did you copy it and give it to somebody else? <laughs> okay, so we were talking about. I think that uh, the threshold copies of my favorite movie tonight. <laughs> I, I just want to mention that oh. offhandedly. How generous of you! <laughs> <laughs> um, so on that episode, we were talking about that. Uh, obviously, when they renamed Ring as Ringu for American audiences, uh, Spock versus Bigfoot says that uh, loaned foreign words are modified when used in Japanese. There's no H or S sound. It's mostly syllables like ha or su. So house becomes uh, hasu, which literally translates back to the English sound as hausu. It's meant to represent the original loaned word, which is house. So there you go. Okay. So there was no there ring. And then the, you know, we got ring you. Uh, B. Shaw Foolery says, because um, we were saying ring owed a debt to Videodrome, he said that I watched Videodrome as a kid on HBO, and my fragile young mind couldn't deal with it, and I avoided VHS tapes for a while. <laughs> wow, ruined VHS tapes for that's I intense. mean, I know why, yeah. but like, that's a big thing to get ruined for yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, we did a Videodrome episode, actually. You can go back and listen we to that did. one. Uh, about the previous week's movie, which was Paranormal Activity 3, Monty Montague writes in and says, Paranormal Activity is one of the most underwhelming and overrated horror series yes <laughs> <laughs> this is the man who's seen one uh i've two. seen two, I've seen two. Yeah. I've seen two. all right well as of l- two weeks ago i've seen two <laughs> <laughs> well thank you all very much for writing yes, in thank again you. We, appreciate we, we yes, really very appreciate much. it really appreciate it um so now we're gonna go around the room and tell you what we thought of tonight's movie malignant starting with colin we'll just go in order tonight colin what'd you think about malignant well i mean i've often complained that uh you know movies nowadays don't take any chances i go to the movies and they're all basically the same similar kind of thing um twice this year i felt that uh i've seen filmmakers just go like okay like i'm going all out or the other one was m night Shyamalan's old and uh, <laughs> james wan's malignant you know um I don't get the, I, I gotta say though, I don't get the giallo, uh, everybody's just saying it feels like a giallo movie. It's I'm like, just the coat and the gloves, yeah, that's all it it's is. It's a black and the weapon. killer and, and the, the weapon yeah. and the and lighting. the color, yeah. yeah. The yeah. colors. That's literally. The poster yeah. made her look like Barbara Steele, yeah. I thought, yeah. so they're like yeah. leaning into that imagery, but it's not really. Uh, well, I think that's all most, again, we talk about, we know, we tend to have seen more and all this stuff. For most people, that's all. That's the surface level stuff they take away from when That's you the only Giallo. thing they know about Giallo. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Looks yeah. They're not talking about narrative. They're talking about right. Visual, right. visual aesthetic yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. Can yeah. we see influences? Sure. Yeah. 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 Oh, sure. yeah definitely. Yeah. yeah. And I think that even goes back to even uh, Saw, I think, has some oh, yeah. uh, you know references. But um, yeah, I, you know, I, I mean, I guess I, my first viewing of it, which I guess we have to kind of, most people are probably only going to see it the one time, mm. was kind of, you know, you're, I was engaged with it, so that was good. It felt kind of long. Uh, the dialogue felt very goofy, <laughs> and, like bad. You know, yes. I mean, oh, my yeah. first read on it was like, oh, man, this is, you know. Uh, I guess because you're trying to figure out what the tone of it is. And maybe some of it does have to do with your expectation of what the movie is going to be going yes. into it. Um, but by the time it was over, I, I mean, it was by the time I think that we saw that little creature on the back of her uh, head, or, you know, on her back. Yeah. And then when she freaked out in the jail cell, that was like, okay, this movie just suddenly moved into, you know, like this other league. It does kind of feel like, uh james wan was trying to do you know something in keeping with the creative spirit uh that filmmakers used to have in the in the 80s Mm -hmm. you know we talk about these 80s fantasy films all the time they stand out from like now when every horror movie kind of seems like a, a a ghost in the house movie and this one you know gives you that and then branches off and goes somewhere that I think is more in keeping with like those eighties movies or something that I keep thinking of like from beyond. I don't know why that title keeps coming up in, in my head when I'm thinking about this, but it's just that kind of like 
we're going to go all the way. I mean, we're going to commit to this concept and just, you know, kind of go nuts with it. Yes, it's crazy. But if you're with it for the ride, I mean, as long as you're not taking it seriously, I think that's the thing. I didn't. And so I, I really loved it, you know, um, but I can see how people would go like, that's just dumb. <laughs> and it's like, okay, well then it's not for you. I really enjoyed the fuck out of this movie. I thought it was probably the most original movie uh, of the year so far. Mm -hmm. It definitely is a horror movie. So I say you definitely have to check out Malignant. You'll be talking about this one. Uh, for years to come. <laughs> Where were you the first time yeah, you saw yeah, Malignant? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You seen that movie with the monster on the back of the girl's head? Yeah. That's what you're... Yeah, okay. Yep, that's what it'll be. <laughs> oh, we can't just, no, we can't just yeah. talk to people like that yet. Yeah. We, need, we need six months. Yeah. yeah. All right, uh, Michaela, what'd you think? Um, I'm typically not a fan of like the Conjuring universe and like those kind of, the mainstream paranormal horror. I don't really like James Wan. I, it depends on what he makes. I dip in and out. I do like insidious. I love that movie. Like he's done some really good stuff. Um, and, but when I do see his name in a movie, I do think, Oh, it's going to be like a ghost movie. And I, do I need another one? Like, yeah. And so I wouldn't say it's a draw for me just cause I'm like, I feel like I already know what I'm going to expect. So it was nice to go into that movie being like, okay, it's probably not going to be what I think it is, but will I like it? And so I don't, it was nice to be caught off guard by a movie for once, you know, it doesn't happen very often, especially because everything is a remake or a sequel now. So I, I loved it. I loved how goofy it was. I loved how it committed to the craziness. It's big swings and he follows through on them. Like he doesn't half-ass any of it. And that's awesome. And I wish more people would commit to their crazy ideas like this. Because that, what the fuck is movies for if mm -hmm. not to do weird things like this, you know? Yeah. See shit that I would never see in <laughs> yeah. real life. Yeah. yeah. Um, By God, he did it. <laughs> I know. And it's just like, it's almost like he had to blackmail the studio or something. And be like, listen, it feels like, this right? is, <laughs> I'm doing, I am doing no, this. No, you will like, release this yeah. movie. Yeah. And, and so pay money to see it, please, so that he can be proven right. Like, don't let this movie be a big financial failure. So definitely, you got to see it. It's insane. It's if you've listened this far, like it's still definitely worth watching because it's crazy. But yeah, it's it's somehow the best and worst movie of the year at the same time. <laughs> it's it's the craziest, most original concept, but it's the worst script and some of the worst dialogue I've ever heard in a movie. And I it's but it's crazy that I can forgive it for its many mistakes and plot holes because it's so fun, you know? So definitely recommend it. Sean. I, I feel like we should note that Sean and I were like violently nodding along with yeah. you right now. <laughs> yes. Violently nodding. Yes. Because I mean, you guys uh, brought up some good points. Um, I feel a lot of the ways you do. Um, I mean, this is what you ask for. This is what I complain about. Um, a trailer's given too much away. Um, everything's part of a franchise. Nothing's new. I mean, and you know, with this movie, we've seen some elements before, but putting them together in a new way, a modern take on stuff. Uh, I mean, I got to give it to them. I trashed this movie before and they got me. So that's to, I think to do that is, uh, an accomplishment these days. Um, the, when, I mean, yeah, when they did that reveal at, at that point, I'm just like that. All right, I'm in. Let's go. This is what I want. I was very happy with that. Um, it, but this is also, like you said, this is the best and worst movie. It's a goofy ass movie. Like there's some just, you, it's goo yeah, the no horror. <laughs> but like we were talking about, it's like, they're not going for horror at this point. Um, what they go for, I think they accomplish, uh, I think they accomplish big time. Yeah. I mean, you know, the acting's. Uh, acting's bad, but I mean that's purposeful. Like they they know he knows exactly what he's doing. I didn't think they did. They proved me wrong. Um, I like that. I'm excited about that. I I don't mind being proved wrong if you know if you can do it. So uh, I had a fun time with this movie. Uh, I think um, and considering we are the normal audience, I think we'll also have a really good time with this. Like it's it's crazy. It's just stuff you don't see. So um, they got me. I'm happy about it. Uh, I yeah. I think you got to see it. You have to. Um, yeah, malignant. We'll be talking about it. <laughs> Holly. Sean, thank you. Why did you hate this movie? <laughs> this movie sucked. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. It didn't. And oh, then her head turns around. The dialogue I loved it. it. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> um, yeah, so I I was reading up on this movie, and I was reading a interview with James Wan, and he was talking about how he was just anxious to... He was done doing The Conjuring. He's done doing all that. He was anxious to get back to like his roots and what he really enjoyed doing. He, the way he said it, he's like, horror already has a uh, Guillermo del Toro, someone yeah. that does the same stuff over and over again. He's like, and that's great. 
but that's not me. And that's not what I want to do. So he wanted to get back to, he's like, I wanted to get back to like when I made saw, but I want to do like what you were saying. Like it felt like an old school, like seventies, like that's what he wanted to do. And I was, I just really appreciate that. He was talking about how he kept wanting to reinvent himself. And I was like, well, bravo, sir. You did it with this weird ass bonkers movie. Um, yeah, this movie's fun. It's ridiculous. Michaela, you're absolutely right. It is the best and worst movie of the year so far. Like, it sucks in so many ways. <laughs> but it's so good in so many ways. <laughs> this movie's a lot of fun. And, you know, even though I said that I did guess the twist, like, I was still like... They're not going to do that, right? Like, there's no way. There's no way they're yeah, going to do that. Yeah, because you're like, this is a yeah. mainstream like, right. Warner yeah. Brothers movie. They're not going to do that. They're not going to do yeah. that. And then At they least do not it. To the extent that right. they did do it. Yeah. And then yeah. they do it, and it still blew my mind. And I was like, this is amazing. They went all out. Like, this is this is the kind of movie we I feel like we all needed because we all have kind of <laughs> fatigue with Hollywood right now. Yeah. And this kind of. It kind of really, it kind of. I feel like you ever seen the movies, <laughs> the the mentor who's been uh, he's been mentoring the the main character in the movie, and then he finally sees some accomplishment, and then you see that one shot of him at the end of the movie. He's like, "Good for you." Yeah, that's how yeah. I feel about them doing that. I'm like, you know what? Good right? for you. Yeah. It exactly. Did good. It kind of restored my faith. Like, okay, there you can there can still be some good movies out there. Yeah, good job. Some fun movies, entertaining yes. movies, entertaining. Yeah, go into this. Knowing what it is, it's ridiculous, it's bonkers. Don't take it seriously. It's not your despite the beginning of this movie where you think it's gonna be conjuring, it's not. It is so crazy. I was on board almost immediately. Um, yeah, this is a fun one. You can't miss it for sure. Well, that's freak show approved. I mean, yeah. I you know, so. in hindsight, it's like I don't know how you would market this movie. No, in, I don't know. Uh, like to actually tell people what it is, but not you know, to get them interested in a way, I don't know, you can't do it. I think any time that you have, like, uh, an original idea, like, sometimes we can see that as being, like, it's, like, almost, like, silly, you know? Yeah. And sometimes it leans heavy into the silly, you mm -hmm. know, and you're like, okay, I, this is, I can't buy it. Maybe that's it. It's such a, a big idea that it's either you can accept it you know mm -hmm. like okay i'm gonna go with it or you just like reject it flat out right you know, like, and like you were saying i do understand why there's people that don't like it I get, it's not for everyone i get sure. it sure but it should be for everyone <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know the irony is we're sitting here going like yeah you know it's like this is great that somebody took a chance but there's probably an executive who saw that uh you know opening weekend and was fired yeah. Oh, oh yeah, probably. Which is unfortunate because it also reminded me of like Slither. When I saw Slither, mm. I was like, "This is like a return to the kind of," yes. and that bombed. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like I don't know if they do kind of herald the return of horror, or like that other people are going to do it. Unfortunately, but we hope that you know you're all listening to this podcast, and uh, you'll, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe yeah. like you said, it, it, Michaela, it'll have legs. Yeah, I, I think it will. I think it'll have legs. As much as things can have legs in the way our society is now. But I oh, think yeah, in the like, modern times where everything goes right. by so quick. Yeah, but I think it'll have... I, I think it'll be... If nothing else, it'll always be on those lists of like overlooked movies or like crazy movies you forgot about and stuff yeah. like that. It'll always pop up. Mm, I hope so. All right, so that's Malignant on the Saturday Night Freak Show. Next week, we're watching a movie that's chosen by... Sean! You know what you're picking next week? I do. What After much thought and many false starts, we will be watching <laughs> Drag Me to Hell. Oh, All there right. we go. Spooky time. Spooky All time. Right. Spooky Sam Raimi coming back to the Freak Show. Mm -hmm. First time on the Freak Show? No, we did Evil Dead. Yeah, we've done Evil Dead. Yeah. That was a while ago, though. That mm -hmm. was an early pick. And Dark Dark Man? We did Dark we Man. We did Dark Man. Yep. There we go. Oh, I was like, I knew there was. I was like, I know there's then. another Sam Raimi. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 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 Don't just wait till Oz great and powerful, guys. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh, <laughs> no. All right. Wait, so. didn't you guys do that one? Uh, no. God, uh, I hope not. We did uh, Return to Oz. There it is. Uh, right. I was like, you did something. I remember. <laughs> yeah. All right. So that's next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. We hope you'll join us. And until then, the basement is going dark.